With boldness, let us approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace as a timely help. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Friends, so that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us be mindful of our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your Spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that, we may, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the midst, even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord even ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. 
You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A mother was preparing pancakes for her two sons one Saturday morning. Kevin and Ryan just loved pancakes. In fact, they loved their mother's pancakes so much that on this particular Saturday morning, they began to argue, like brothers do, over who would get the first pancake. Five-year-old Kevin and three-year-old Ryan were not only fussing, they were also pushing and shoving, trying each one to be the first in line to get the first pancake. Their mother saw this as an opportunity to share a moral lesson, and so she said, Boys, boys, calm down. I want to ask you a question. If Jesus were here with us this morning, what do you think he would say? No answer. Well, she continued, I'll tell you what he would say. He would say, please let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. In reply, five-year-old Kevin said, great idea, Mom. And then he turned to his younger brother and said, Ryan, you be Jesus. (laughs) In today's gospel, Jesus prays for our unity with him and with each other. And we know that that's very difficult in the world in which we live. Jesus wanted unity to flourish among his disciples. And so on the last night of his life on earth, while sitting at supper with his disciples, Jesus prayed his high priestly prayer, the beautiful prayer we heard in our gospel. He prayed, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one. So that they may all be one. In those last hours, 
What was at the forefront of Jesus' mind was unity. His last prayer. It can feel like an unattainable goal for us today. Granted, we can't single-handedly resolve 2,000 years of division in the church. Disunity seems to be a part of our human nature. In Jesus' time, it was division between Gentiles and Jews, Pharisees and Sadducees. Then there was the division between the church in the East and the West. On top of that, there is even a division later on between Protestants and Catholics. Then there's a division between brothers and sisters in each of our families and even in our parishes. How can we possibly become one? Remember that Jesus prays for you. Think that's the start. Friends, the quest for unity starts with Jesus helping you to love the person right in front of you. Even if you don't agree with them, you can still perceive the grace of God in their lives. You can see that God is on their side just as much as he's on our side or my side. Place yourself in today's gospel scene. Think about Jesus looking at the faces of each of his disciples. Now place yourself there too. And not just you, imagine someone that you're not at peace with. Try not to put that person in Judas's place, okay? In all seriousness, maybe you and your spouse see things differently on a sensitive issue. Whenever the topic arises, a wall seems to cut you off from one another. Jesus is gazing into your eyes. He's praying that you be united. Can you come to an agreement? Can you exchange views and understand each other's position? What might Jesus be praying for? He's praying for you and your loved one and your enemy, and for others. How might he encourage you to be one? Friends, don't give in to discouragement. Work for unity in your life. Give your brother the first pancake. Stop imagining your spouse or your neighbor, your friend or co-worker as Judas. And remember that Jesus wants their well-being as much as he wants yours. Seeking to lead lives that give glory and praise to God, let us offer our prayers to the Father. We pray for Pope Francis. May the Lord continue to safeguard and guide him as he shepherds us in the ways of faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for world leaders. May the grace of God perfect in them a desire for doing his will in their service. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for countries suffering from the effects of civil war or conflict, even amidst this pandemic. May the Prince of Peace grant them lasting peace and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all of us in this parish community, for our families and our friends. May the Lord bless us and sustain us in our lives as disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died. May they be greeted this day by the risen Christ and all his angels in heaven. And today we remember Helen Miller. Let us pray to the Lord. And friends, we offer any intention which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray in a special way for the people of the parish. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Most gracious God, hear the prayers we offer this day, for we ask all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood 
of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, by the light of the gospel, strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. United in faith, we turn to our Father in heaven and offer the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ending. My dear friends, during the month of May, we will continue to turn to our Blessed Mother each day and pray the litany and recite the Memorare. For, those, for, the suffer, for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, those that are caring for them and for a quick end to this pandemic. And so we pray. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, O Morning Star, O Comforter of the Afflicted, Mother of Christ, Mother of our Savior, Mother of the Church, Cause of our Joy, Virgin Most Venerable, Virgin Most Powerful, Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. God bless you and have a blessed day.